Okay, nothing lives forever, but I wish a sail cover would. Look at this, pure rot. I've been putting sail repair tape on it now for a month. I suppose I shouldn't complain because after all, nothing lives forever, including us. I mean, we can't be sure. This is David Hume, the great skeptic. Everything's a probability based on our own limited experience here on Earth. So maybe right now somebody is 16 years old and going to live forever. Good luck to them. But I think the best argument for mortality is by Professor Tsun Diana, who said offhandedly and cryptically and marvelously satirically that being born is a poor argument for immortality. So let's go with that and plan to make a new sail cover. Perfection, I hope. Look at that. It holds it beautifully. But this is the main halyard winch. It's a Barriant 23, and of course, Barriant hasn't manufactured winches in 20 years or more. This is a self tailing winch, meaning that you only need one hand to crank, and that's a marvelous feature. It works by compressing the line between these two plates and there are some springs to uh, hold it there but it often happens in older boats that the line is no longer grasped correctly. A sailing colleague of mine suggested there was a spacer plate in there. I think this is what it is. This stainless plate sits in the aluminum casting like that and then these spring pins hold it down so that it can compress against the rope to hold it. And if the holding power wasn't sufficient, what if one just removed the spacer plate, put the aluminum to aluminum pieces back together, held them down with their spring pins? That would reduce by, what is that, a 32nd of an inch almost, the distance between the plates and mine hold a line better. The arm goes about here, I think. There we go. So here's the main halyard of uh, unnecessarily heavy Dyneema, a very unstretchy rope. Goes round, round, round through the self tailing arm and then jams. Oh my goodness. That jammed in there rather well. I declare that a success. Oh yeah, 
Well, there's a pleasant afternoon breeze. This summer's family cruise to Catalina Island was grand, of course, and very helpful in giving me two weeks work when we got back ashore. I managed to foul the prop on a mooring line at the island, but I had on board a special tool for that named Kevin. It wrapped it double. It wrapped it one way and then wrapped it another way. Oh, jeez. Or it got both ends, I guess is what it did. Yeah, uh, I but can't. But it looks, it just was around, it wasn't, you know, it was just around the front of the. The shaft? The shaft, yeah, so it doesn't look. Good. Not in there, not tight. Well, I, I, I can't get it out of, out of reverse gear, so I hope that this will allow it. Uh, the engine's off, by the way, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really? Off. It's off? It's off? It's off. Oh my God. Yay, yeah. Kevin. Oh, you're amazing. Woohoo! Family cruising is theoretically relaxing, but with my family, there's always the threat of violence by a slapjack. Oh! Oh, 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 oh my gosh, she's back. She's back. Wow. Oh my god. I'm getting dangerously low. And my hand hurts a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to feel my blood pressure rise a little bit. I need to take my live alone. Our hands are getting dangerously close to this pile. He turns 74 years old today. No hovering. Oh! All right, Tally. Oh my God, you are That's a vicious so person. It's totally on, you know, I'm getting oh my God, <laughs> Tally, you are one of us. That's just me and Tally. Oh! Oh! I didn't know that. I'm so, back. So slow. I'm back, one at a time. Yes. Oh! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you are so mean. I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. And the inflatable leaked. What? The shore boat at $7 a head? So I got to learn how to glue PVC. And on the way back, the engine overheated. But as we'll see, there's always a solution, literally in this case. So this is the immersion system for uh, cleaning the scale out of the heat exchanger and, and all the hoses. And on this boat, it's just a matter of unattaching the raw water intake and directing it down here into a bucket full of in this case uh, barnacle buster brand and then you run the engine and so the barnacle buster solution goes through the cooling system turn the engine off and wait a day a solution of four to one this is going to be a little more strong than that you know it's three to one and the hose isn't long enough, naturally. So I thought maybe I could get away with just holding it like this. I remembered to uh, to take this zinc out because naturally you don't want the uh, barnacle buster to dissolve your existing zinc. So I just put a, a blank plug in there. The athletic Tracy will assist me by starting the engine because my arms aren't long enough. Okay, Trace, start her up. Is water coming out? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can increase the uh, throttle just a little bit. So we let this sit in there for 24 hours and theoretically the system is now filled with barnacle buster and happily dining on calcium deposits. And tomorrow we'll start the engine and clean it out. This uh, eight-year-old 
West Brain PRU-3 dinghy finally sprang a leak over the weekend. And I, I think that the only seam failure is this. So the solution theoretically is either buy a new one for about $1,000 or try to repair it with this two-part polymarine uh, PVC inflatable boat adhesive for which the instructions call for two cleanings with uh, acetone, I think to not only clean but also to soften the PVC fabric. So I did this five minutes ago, they want me to do it again. And then, 10 minutes, then brush on the first thin coat, leave 20 minutes, and apply a second thin coat, while still tacky bringing together with as much pressure as possible. This particular kit is a, a hardener and the adhesive at the ratio of 1 to 25. And no, of course, way to measure such a 1 to 25 ratio. But uh, we'll figure that out as the saying goes. Stir well. All right, time for the second light coat, for which we will need eyeglasses. Because I had cataract surgery this year, which greatly improved my distance vision. I, I was having trouble driving at night at age 81. I chose mono lenses. My distance vision is now perfect, 2020. But I still have to wear reading glasses for up close. A small price to pay. The other part of the price was that I now see the world in vivid, like a video game. Whereas for the last 40 years or so, Landscapes have appeared more or less as Renoirs, don't you know? Fully saturated, quite pretty. Like at 5 p.m. on a hot, humid day in Annapolis. And now, everything is bright and sunny. Having a hard time getting used to it. I prefer to th make the world vivid by thought, imagination, rather than having it thrown in your face like a hot tomato. But, as Stephen Wright said, you can't have everything. Where would you put it? I have concluded that I can now press these together while they're still tacky, as the instructions say. Like so. Now to apply pressure, as the instructions say and pressure we have. Mixed pot life, four hours, curing time, 48 hours. Maximum bond strength, seven days. Well, what are the chances of success? Seven and a half and ten. Let's make it eight and ten. I feel this is going to work. And it did. Well, it's 24 hours later. Okay. Impeller in place. Raw water intake hose connected. Uh, strainer closed, seacock open. So when we start her up, we should see the buster coming out of the exhaust. This is the temperature gauge, which is supposed to read 180, but was pushing 200. If this works, we're going to go for a test cruise and see where the temperature resides.
There's nothing like a beam reach. Nothing. Nothing in the world. And when we seem to be sailing in a barnyard with a good number of chickens accompanying us, the solution is just to give the chickens a drink. Well, there's no question that my own brilliance never ceases to amaze me. And yet another evidence of it is my brilliant invention for the foredeck. I mean, I don't think anyone has ever thought of this before. You know, a cushion to sit on. I may go down in history as the first guy who invented a cushion, but there's a special problem on this boat for you to put the cushion up forward. And that is the profound problem in seamanship and probably nuclear physics in making a slot in an existing cushion, which as you can see, or as I can see, is a brilliantly neat job. But turning this thing inside out and trying to sew it on a sewing machine is quite a challenge, what I, what I was well prepared to meet, mind you. Although, after three tries and about six hours, I wound up with my sewing awl trying to figure out how to close up, up this spatial geometry problem, which I think I did brilliantly. Kevin certainly enjoyed it, and it is a hit. The ability to relax on the foredeck on a sailboat with your butt not being tortured by rock hard gel coat. That's nothing to sneer at. My cheetahs were a monkey, but I didn't think they were going. Yeah. No, I don't think they're going. Well, here we are. This is uh, almost seven knots. We're stuck pretty much right at 180 on the temperature gauge. After, oh, this must be 45 minutes of test motoring. So it looks like Barnacle Buster worked after 24 hours sitting time in the hoses. What a day, eh? Well, I think you call this summer. You can't look like that. You're uh, going a little slow. I'm the last one You're a sit. little slow. I... Gotta go fast. You have to flip away. You gotta flip away, flip baby. Flip away, I always do. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Kevin got it. <laughs> you have to go the other way, you gotta Sally. Go to, you gotta go the can't see way. it first. You gotta, yes. Hold it. Hold it. Like, hold it underneath. Hold your hand there. Like that. Put your hand underneath. Like this.